In this video presentation, I'm going to talk to you about a set of ligaments known as the collaterals. And the collateral ligaments basically means on the sides. So in this case, so if you're looking at this knee, which will be the right knee, because we've got the fibula on this side here, on the lateral side. So there's a ligament on this side known as the lateral collateral ligament. It's also known as the fibula ligament as well because of the attachment onto the fibula along here. And then this one is typically a lot shorter. And then if you go onto the medial side of the knee, we have got the ligament known as the medial collateral ligament. And another name for this one is known as the tibial ligament. So it's up to you. You can either call it the MCL or tibial ligament. And on the outside, you can call it the LCL or the fibula ligament. Now, in terms of what they do, typically as a choice, if you're looking at, say, the MCL, this one is a lot more sprained, especially like in contact sport like football, rugby, etc., compared to the outer ligament, and I'll explain that as we go through. So this ligament here is a lot wider. If you're looking at, say, the average hand with two fingers, it's roughly two fingers wide. And it naturally depends how tall you are, will depend how long it is. But roughly speaking, six, seven, nine, up to nine centimeters, maybe a bit longer, shorter, yeah, depending on naturally how tall you are. If you're five foot two, it's gonna be a bit different if you're six foot eight. But that ligament crosses the medial side of the joint line, and in a simplistic way, it prevents the knee from doing this, okay, which is called valgus. So if the knees are going in, the knee medically is called genu, G-E-N-U, and then if that knee is going in, they call it like a knock knee, but medically it's called a genu valgus. So if the knees are knocking together, then that ligament is always going to be on strain, if you like, because it's going to be stretched. Not that you're going to strain it, because ligaments you sprain, and then naturally muscles you strain. That MCL is flat. We have an anterior, middle, and posterior fiber of the superficial component of it here. So when the knee is bent, you can probably see that part of the anterior fibers will be more taut, and the posterior fibers will be more relaxed, okay, more slack here. If I was to move this one and look on inside, not that you can see a structure, but if I was to do that, there would be another fiber within, and it's known as the deep component of the MCL. And the deep component directly attaches to this structure here, which is called the medial meniscus, just there, and also attaches to the joint capsule. So they are integrated into that medial side in here. So the downside is, if you damage the MCL, you'd also can damage the medial menisci, and vice versa. If you tear the medial menisci, you can also tear the MCL. So normally done, say, in rotation, it's normally a compression with a rotation that you can damage the menisci where it rotates. But also because there's a rotation and that ligament is preventing part of rotation, then it can also be involved. MCL typically is involved with an ACL. So if you've torn the ACL, which is anterior cruciate ligament, and the MCL, and the medial meniscus, they call it the unhappy triad, because it's three, yeah, or O'Donoghue's triad. Okay, so the MCL typically is involved with a, another structure, the menisci, and also the ACL, and don't really want to tear all three structures within that. On the outside, the LCL is very different. There's no direct connection, okay? It goes from the head or fibula to the lateral femoral condyle along here. Whereas on this side, the MCL is medial, below the medial tibial condyle. There's an area here called the pes anserinus, just there. That means the goose foot. Three little fingers, pes anserinus, the goose, sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus will blend into this medial side in here. So the MCL is located near the pes anserinus, okay, on this attachment. And naturally it's going to go almost like onto the, the epicondyle of the femur on this medial side just there. This area just here is called the adductor tubercle just there. So the MCL is very close to that and that would be where the adductor magnus 
will come down along here. So back to the LCL. So we don't need to discuss this one too much. So it's a lot smaller, four, five, six centimeters, depending on how tall you are. There's no direct attachment to the lateral meniscus. There's no direct attachment to the joint capsule. So if you tear it, it's normally done for what we call a vera. So if you've got knees that are bowing, that ligament is always on stretch. Okay, so if you test it by doing like a vera stress test, and then there is excessive motion going this way, then perhaps we have, you have torn the lateral collateral ligament. It can be involved with posterior cruciate, can also be involved in ACL sometimes, okay, but, but typically the LCL more with posterior and it's quite rare to do either, whereas MCL is more with ACL and it's a lot more common to tear the ACL and then obviously the, the medial side on here. So that's a little bit about the lateral and the medial. So they are preventing valgus and various motion. Collateral will mean on the sides. And then the LCL is more round like a finger. Okay, and you can palpate that one quite easily. Whereas the MCL is more flat like, and it covers the joint line. So this one is more commonly injured in respect to the, the LCL. I remember that the alternative name, the fibular ligament, and also known as the, the tibial ligament. Thank you for watching the presentation.